I hope that this uh, tutorial made it possible for everyone to play this way. You know, of course you can um, make, try to make it, uh, think that you can try to make it, to make it uh, easier for yourself, kind of cheat, you know, don't make imagination, don't make any intonation, maybe, you know, bring your hands better, feel more powerful, but it will never be good enough. You will never feel deeply satisfied that it's so completely natural comes from you. You enjoy it so much and uh, that you should never be afraid that if you play too loud, then the tone become harsh. So, you know, it's kind of when you scale, you know, taking the short way or really spend maybe half an hour work on this and fix it once and forever but feel very, very good inside. So I would choose that variant, you know. <laughs>
there's nothing written there so it's really kind of legato intonation that's all and i think if tchaikovsky wanted some accents he would write them in the score so apparently he didn't want something like you know imaginary accents come from the place of trying to make chords more powerful there is really a much better way to do it so <laughs> this is what we're going to talk about in this lesson so let's start with correct um, body and arm movements um, uh, if for example you play with imagination you play with intonation with weight but you know, you, you get your weight and then you bring your hands like this. So you kill it right away. <laughs> Nothing will ever reach your keyboard. Or else you bring it, but then you stop, you prepare your <laughs> hands and again, you, you prevent your weight uh, to transfer to the keyboard. So uh, also, if you play, let's say you bring your hands in the right way but then you play without any wrist or elbow movement it would rather sound very harsh you know let me let me try it's like you are um, really banging the piano or it, it has this banging song is it correct to say banging tom <laughs> like like this <laughs> um so here's the solution Lift up your arm from the elbow uh, and don't be, ex don't be afraid to exaggerate this movement. So basically, if I show you guys, it really looks like this. So it's not just like this, but like this. And don't be afraid to make this um, a bit girly and funny movement. Just get used to this feeling, just completely get used to it. And then at the end, make sure that when you're going down your elbow goes first down and then your wrist follows instead of like this you're not going with the same level you're going this level so after making this couple of times then eventually what naturally will be left is just this movement that allows you to continue bringing weight to the instrument even while it's really good okay now when you play chord uh, at least on this stage of movements you should keep actually it on every step I'm sorry so when you play the chord you should keep your hand always light and empty and um, okay, I have to read it <laughs> when you play a chord always keep your hand light and empty it will also help you release any tension in your hands right after touching the chord so if I play with completely weak and loose hand and I touch the key, and then naturally I won't have any tension after that in my hand. So. Um, now, uh, the strength in your fingers and uh, power in your arms will come later from imagination, intonation and weight. On the other hand, if you force and tense your hand even a little bit, that prevents your hands from producing powerful tone, even if you imagine and intonate. So basically, do not force any touch. Uh, it will all come naturally when you're gonna start imagining dynamics, when you're gonna start using a body of your wa uh, weight of your body through your internal singing. Play basically very gently. <laughs> so after you gently touch the chord, then you need to move so uh, if a current chord, if a chord, if the chord, let's say this chord, um, is higher than previous chord, then all the movements in our wrist later in our imagination and singing gonna be to the right. If we are going down from this to this chord, then this chord is gonna be to the left. Um, Now, when you need to move your wrist, 
make sure that you let go of the fingers that prevents you from moving. Let's say your hand is quite narrow and uh, you can't really move your lips. This, for example, thumb wouldn't allow you. Then you should just let go of the thumb. Like this. And if you go down, touching chord and moving your wrist, move your elbow to the next chord, letting go the chord right away and don't try to hold the notes and move the elbow. So when you play and you move your elbow, don't hold the notes and try to move and break your arms in half. So you play the note, as soon as you start moving your elbow, you're right away. important uh, to not keep your hand open while moving. Uh, close it right away, it will help to keep your hands out of excessive tension. So, uh, could be story of your life <laughs> that you play a chord and then when you move your hand to the next chord, your hand is still in, like in this position. <laughs> so now you play the chord and right away you close it. You play the chord and right away you close it. Again, if your hands are light and empty, it will be natural. I wouldn't even have to say that, but you know. So I'm playing the chord, I move my wrist. And in between chords, my hands are just like this. Now, you need to move elbows very quickly and light, even if you play in a slow tempo. So don't, you know, do like this. This is unnatural. You move it. Try to move your um, elbow as much as possible. So don't just make a of movement. Again, if I show from this angle, it's like this. Left, right, left, right. That's big. Um, all right. And again, I just want to say a couple of words about the, the extreme chords. When you play and your elbow would go to the right. And when you play top chord, wrist to the right and elbow to the left. Okay. And so lastly, when you move your wrist, your elbow, then also move your torso. It's uh, very important to move your torso when you go you know, through the whole keyboard, maybe not through the whole octave, but the whole keyboard for sure. So I'm playing. review what we have learned so far. Light hands, bring hands to the keyboard from the elbow, start playing right away. Gently touch the key. After that, move your wrist right away, let go of the fingers that hold on, that prevents you from moving. Move your elbow and torso light and quickly with a big movement. That's all. <laughs> and um, when you play on this stage, I just want to say, don't try to control the uh, evenness of your fingers, I would say, um, somehow, because we are not there yet. We will control fingers naturally through our imagination and probably even through intonation. But right now we're just making movement and our goal is to play very gently uh, with absolutely light hands, just like this. And I would suggest to stick with this step uh, maybe for a couple of days till you get all movements kind of solid in your system and then you can move on and add other layers. Now let's go to imagination. So let's say we have another story here. Now we're going to make all the movements 
but uh, we're gonna lack of imagination. And as you can see, I will show you right now, the, uh, it, it would look a little bit superficial, like your plane would be shallow, empty inside, you will feel it. Of course, I'm gonna try to play, let's say, I have no, not, no knowledge about imagination, so I'm just gonna try to play it loud, that's all. Nice movements, loud playing. important to have imagination here. So basically on this step we're gonna upload to our mind all four or eventually seven or eight notes of the chords so that will that will control our fingers while playing. And a um, um, couple of days ago I made this video that if you have problems with imagining let's say a string group of instruments or um, any three-dimensional sound, like sound texture, for example, then you can just stick with imagining the pitch, basically the height of the note. So when you sing it, you kind of can feel it. It's like it, it gives an imprint to your mind. It's like a light sound print, you know, in your mind. You can feel it. And uh, that's what we can work with. That's enough. So we can start with one note at a time. So you play it. You sing it to the left. You imagine right away and then you touch it again gently with gent with uh, absolutely light hand again naturally you will release all the tension after touching the key if you play this way then you sing next one. imagine play oh. <coughs> oh. imagine now this one is too low for me so I'm gonna sing higher again but um, that's what you should do as well. You should sing in your comfortable octave. But uh, try to imagine it in the right octave when you when you imagine it. I think you should be able to do that. And then you work uh, the same way with the left hand. And uh, after that, try to imagine two notes at once. So um, again, you play two notes. Again, if the chord is going, if the uh, if the notes in the chord are to the left, you should start singing and imagining from the top note. That's what you will get here. For example, in this chord, if the notes are all to the right. You will start from the low note. Okay, that's important. All right. So you play, you sing, oh, oh, you imagine. You sing faster, oh, oh, you imagine. You sing faster, oh, oh, you imagine. So when you get to imagine it very, uh, with zero time between notes, and you just play them. Then you work the same way with three notes. Oh, 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 oh. And then when it's all together, again, you play three notes. Then you work the same way with four notes. Then you do the same with the left hand. And uh, the last step would be imagining the same way both hands. So in your imagination, you're going this way. And then here, from the bottom note. All of this in your imagination. Um, and... Uh, Basically, then, after that, you should be able to imagine separately each chord, seven notes in your mind with movement. Seven notes in your mind with movement. Seven notes in your mind with movement. And then you move to the second step where you need to uh, imagine glissando in between those notes. And again, to, uh, to ease yourself, to, to ease the step for yourself, you can sing uh, out loud this glissando first but without any resistance you know just a nice glisse and if for example you sing as the first note remember the first note to the left it's kind of funny because the first note to the left and then the next note to the right so your glissando would look this way 
and from the top down so sing it a couple of times and then uh, it would be easy for you to imagine and if you imagine um, let's say both hands you know together a couple of chords it feels for me like uh, you're making a stroke with a wide brush you know in the paint and then uh, your colors you have like seven colors you know and they're all mixed and you just make this that's how it feels like <laughs> for me <laughs> okay um so when you're gonna play with imagination again we haven't attached dynamics yet so it's just a pitch you should follow this order so imagine first imagine the chord play with absolutely light hands and move your wrist flat now after that you need to imagine the sound to the next note combine it somehow with elbow movement then you imagine next chord and then you touch it with light hands with wrist movement then you imagine the sound and move elbow imagine next note you touch it. so this is the order again uh, you probably notice that with imagination your fingers will be much better controlled so if i play anticipate the sound over here some moment before I play the chord and after that there will be time to finally add dynamics and uh, so we will need to imagine the pitch of chords every basic pitch all the notes and the chords very loud now you have to imagine it in a huge well resonated tone still with movements and still with glissandos uh, because if you uh, let's say imagine tone loud but you know in a harsh and flat way like it hits your ears when you would imagine it then this is what you will get as an outcome while playing the same hitting touch and hitting tone so we don't want that <laughs> um, again when you're gonna play it make sure that you play with light hands i'm gonna say that all the time <laughs> um, and basically i think you make the same routine as you made just with a peach but now you add to your imagination dynamics and uh, i show you in a second but you will notice that uh, again even though i have my imagination my dynamics correct movements the tone would be still a bit banging uh, not powerful deep and free enough but it's still better than nothing okay i imagined and let's go again i'm playing without any intonation without any weight so far As you just saw a second ago, even if we make head movements, we make imagination dynamics, but we lack all the air and breathing while playing, which we get through intonation and weight, our forte is still a bit harsh and dull, I would say. So how to make intonation? So we're going to start again with singing out loud, making a sound, but this time with a good resistance with a good resistance make sure that your voice still remains free while singing so you're not singing but this way so you can start with helping yourself with uh, another hand and sing it together and a little bit you know hold this hand back and then try to make the same with singing internally 
This is really the best exercise to feel this natural resistance without unnecessary pressure in your voice. And then start playing with, intonation, with imagination, intonation and correct movements. And again, the order is very important, otherwise it's just a soup in your mind. So you imagine the first chord, you play it with light hands, okay, make wrist movement. And next, while you measure glissando, you also intonate with resistance and make elbow movement. Then imagine next chord, play with wrist. While imagining, making glissando with your intonation, you move your elbow to the next chord. Um, it looks like this. If I play without weight, but with intonation. It's a little bit better than without intonation, but still there is not much life going on, it's still a bit like a robot <laughs> playing, robotic playing. Um, okay, so now the last step we can finally engage arm weight and let me just give you a definition of weight. Um, I wrote that very nicely here. So weight is just a free energy within our body and it's not a heaviness or pressure in our body. Uh, on the contrary, it feels very free, um, very light, um, it feels very relaxed. I make this point uh, very important because in my childhood I was somehow confused, I don't know, maybe because of the teaching that I got from uh, one of my private students, my, one of my private teachers, <laughs> private teachers, that you know when you play with a weight you should kind of give more pressure to the key. And I ended up playing you know, pressing the key so much that I got some aching Maybe that was even tendonitis, I don't know. Over here, I couldn't play it at all. So weight is not a pressure, weight is not a heaviness. It's really opposite. It's like you are, you just free. You're like uh, soaring somewhere in the universe. It's, it feels very, very free and relaxed. So this is the free energy that we are aiming to find in our body and then transfer to the instrument. So I suggest to start with this simple exercise away from the piano uh, to feel body weight, to feel transferring it to the keyboard, uh, which is going to be our knees. So uh, let's take a look. Uh, so it's very easy. You're going down, you feel weight over there. You're going up, you feel weight going f uh, along th through all your body like this. And then at the end, you lean a little bit forward and you feel like weight go through your palm to your knees. That's all. Just like this. No pressure. And uh, next step would be start singing as soon as you feel weight over here. So it feels like this. Inhale over here, and then from here, it's like a slide down, you know? <laughs> when you start feeling sliding down, you start exhale together with singing, with your intonation. <laughs> down the next step would be do the same in front of the piano uh, instead of bending forward you just lean a little bit so you substitute it with leaning forward so you lean forward in the beginning you get our weight and then you lean forward again and start singing Last step would be um, again substitute singing with playing. So as soon as you feel you start exhaling and ready kind of to sing, instead start lifting up your elbows and arms and start playing. So that's why it's so important the beginning of the video to make correct movements because you can get a weight. You're ready, <laughs> and then you go. And everything is 
just frozen right away. So the best part of this video, we're finally ready. <laughs> Uh, um, again, let's recap very quickly what we've done in today's lesson. So we need to empty our hands, imagine the first chord, all the notes with movement very loud. Then we get our weight, bring arms to the keyboard, playing the first note, move wrist. <laughs> Like, you know, as soon as you make this, you establish around yourself different space, different vibrations. So you kind of inside this weight all the time. You never lose it if you connect to, uh, to intonation. So you make imagination, you make the weight. Okay. Okay, right away. Forget. So you imagine the chord. <laughs> You get a weight, bring arms to the keyboard, play the wrist to the left, then start imagining glissando, making intonation and weight, and move your elbow to the next chord. Then you imagine next chord, you play it. Sando, intonation, weight, elbow movement. Imagine next chord, you play. And so eventually what we get is something very powerful, uh, very pleasant for you to play, very pleasant for audience to listen to. <laughs> Okay, so I guess that's about it for today and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.